We're gonna open up to Luke 9, 18 through 24 is our, our foundational text for today. That's where we're gonna read from. So open up there if you've got a Bible with you. If not, you'll see it on the screen behind me. And we're gonna be reading from the Gospel of Luke. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Here's what it says, Luke 9. It says, once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, who do the crowds say that I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others that one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. <clears throat> but what about you, he asked, who do you say that I am? Peter answered, God's Messiah. Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone, and he said, the Son of Man, referring to himself, must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. Come on, can we put our hands together for the word of God? Today, today I wanna talk from this idea, the road ahead, the road ahead. Would you pray with me? Let's ask God to, to meet us here this day. Jesus, we thank you so much for today. And we, uh, God, we don't dismiss or overlook the fact that this is not just a program, Lord. This is not just a any sort of uh, inspirational talk or a TED talk, we understand that as we open up the word of God, as we gather under your name, that there you are in our midst. So right now, this is holy ground. We recognize it, we declare it, and we say that this is yours. So we ask that you do what it is that you wanna do. Holy Spirit, help us, minister to us, speak to us. Let us walk out of this room encouraged, and let us walk out of this room closer to you than we did walking in. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen, come on, if you love Jesus, put your hands together. Well, happy Palm Sunday. Hope you feel good being in church on Palm Sunday. You made it. Um, today is a very special day, Palm Sunday. I wore this shirt because it reminds me of being on a beach around palm trees and uh, Hosanna in the highest heaven, amen. Um, do you like the shirt? Yeah? Okay, a lot of people have been making fun of me so far, so I'm just trying to get my confidence back. No, I'm kidding. Uh, today's an important day. It's Palm Sunday. And maybe, maybe you um, didn't grow up in church and you don't really have a lot of context on what today is, or maybe you have been church, in church for a long time. I was talking to somebody the other day that they've been in church for a long time, but they still don't really know what Palm Sunday is all about. So uh, for me, growing up, Palm Sunday was a day that as we entered into church, they would give us the little palm branches and we would make a cross the whole survey. I think we should bring that back, right? They, they're gonna do it in Boo Kids and we're gonna do it in here next Sunday, it's gonna be fun. Um, but if you don't know what Palm Sunday is, I think it's important that we, we give some context to what today is before we move forward. And today is the day, Palm Sunday is the day where we, we remember and we celebrate what's referred to as Jesus's triumphal entry. It is the, the kickoff to what we call Holy Week, AKA the week leading up to Easter. And where we find ourselves here in the text, when we arrive to Palm Sunday, in the Gospels, we find that Jesus has been on the road for about three years, and he is teaching about the kingdom of heaven, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There's a new kingdom that is coming, and you need to prepare for it. And over the course of the three years, he's performing miracles, he's healing people, he's, he's helping people, he's building up a reputation. Jesus is the man, okay? And now... They have arrived at this point where they are heading towards to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. This is something that they did each and every year. This is the time of year where the Passover is taking place. Except this time, the setup is a little bit different. As they are outside of Jerusalem and they're preparing to come in, he tells two of his boys, his disciples, um, I want you guys to go and get me a donkey. It's weird, but it'll make sense in a minute. And they go and they get the donkey. The Lord needs the donkey. They bring the donkey over and Jesus, he, he mounts onto the donkey and he goes down the Mount of Olives and he looks at the road ahead of him and there we are. We are at Palm Sunday. And I wanna read to you what it says in Matthew because Matthew 
was an eyewitness of this. This is a historical account of what took place on that day. Matthew 21, eight through 11, it says, a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him, Jesus, and those that followed him, they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They're quoting scripture at Jesus. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So they're celebrating him. When Jesus entered into Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred. I like that. The whole city was stirred. And they asked, who is this? And the crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So Jesus has now arrived into Jerusalem. The crowds are fired up. And Holy Week, as you and I know it, has commenced. So now let's, let's fast forward 2,000 plus years to today. We find ourselves in a very similar situation. Here we are in a large crowd in church, waving our hands in worship, waving our palms, and proclaiming that Jesus has entered into the city. He's entered into our hearts. He's entered into the temple. It's pretty, it's pretty powerful. It's pretty amazing to consider that 2,000 plus years later, the church of Jesus Christ is still remembering this exact moment, celebrating this exact moment. It's powerful to consider that 2,000 plus years later that people are still gathering to recall the road that eventually changed the course of human history. So that's what it is that is happening right now. So, so listen, if you are in this room and you have wondered whether you are a part of something significant or not, I would submit to you the proof is right here. The proof is in front of you. The proof is all around you. You right now in this moment are joined with a fraternity and a sorority of believers who have been proclaiming the good news of Jesus for 2,000 years. You need to recognize, recognize that right now your voices are joining the multitudes that have been yelling out the good news for two millennia. Your life is forever linked to the legacy that has been projecting the best news for 2,000 years, telling the greatest story that has ever been told. And that's where we, that's where we find ourselves right now. So we are, we're caught up on what Palm Sunday is, yes? We, we know what Palm Sunday is. So today, what I feel like my assignment is, what I wanna talk to you about is, I just wanna paint a clear picture of the road ahead. I want us to understand fully the road that Jesus embarked on and the road that you and I get to join him on. I want us to understand that. What awaits on the road ahead? What awaits on the road ahead? Well, let's look back to our foundational text in Luke 9. In Luke 9, Jesus is trying to portray, to paint a picture of what comes ahead for him. Luke 9, 22, these are Jesus' words. He says, the Son of Man himself the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. He must be killed and on the third day raised to life. So catch that. In Luke 9, 10 chapters before Luke's account in Luke 19 of Palm Sunday, of the, of the Palm Sunday event, Jesus is trying to paint a picture. He's trying, to, he's trying to give some insight, some perspective, some foresight of what's to come. And what is he saying in Luke 9? He's saying that the Son of Man, I am gonna step into something. The road ahead for me is suffering. So on this particular Sunday, what I want us to understand and what I want you to write down because it's the foundation that we're gonna build upon is that today, the road ahead for Jesus was suffering. The road ahead for Jesus was suffering. Write that down because that's the, that's the foundation that we're building off of. On this Palm Sunday, in Luke 9, a year before Jesus comes into that road, he is saying the Son of Man is going to have to suffer. And now fast forward there on that road, and he's looking at the literal road ahead of him, and what do you think is on his mind? He knows what's going to happen. He's God. He knows what he's going to step into. He knows that he has to fulfill the prophecy, and what he's trying to proclaim is that for me, the road ahead is suffering. And he's specific about it. He says that the road ahead is suffering and that this includes some things. It includes being rejected. Rejected by who? rejected by the chief priests, by the elders, by the teachers of the law. In other words, Jesus is saying that I am going to be rejected by the people who are supposed to know me the most. I am going to be rejected by the people who are supposed to acknowledge me and supposed to assist me in highlighting who I truly am. Those are the people 
that are gonna reject me. So it makes me wonder on this Palm Sunday for myself and, and for us here, do you ever reject Jesus? Do, you ever, do I ever reject Jesus? When people look at my life, is it obvious that I have a relationship with Jesus? Or are there aspects of my life that don't point people towards him but point people away from him? I think it's important on this Palm Sunday as we prepare for the road ahead, which is Easter, which is the road that we are all marching to on this week, that we are examining this question. We are asking ourselves this question and we are answering this question for ourselves. Are there aspects of my thought life, aspects of my belief, aspects of my behavior that do not acknowledge who Jesus is, that reject who Jesus is? Are there aspects of your interest? Are there aspects of your conversations? Are there aspects of your priorities that point people away from him instead of point people towards him. You see, the reality is, and what Jesus is trying to do here is he's trying to give us some foresight. He's trying to get us to understand that the pathway for him is suffering, which does include being rejected by people who are supposed to know him. I want us on this Palm Sunday to learn from that insight and recognize that in this week of Easter, I have two choices. I can ensure that I am either projecting the person of Jesus or I can be rejecting the person of Jesus. I want my life, I want my life especially in this week. I want our lives, especially in this week. I want our church, especially in this week, to not be rejecting who Jesus is, but only projecting who Jesus is. We get to do that. We get to, we get to focus ourselves on that in this week. So Jesus is saying, I'm gonna be rejected by the people that are supposed to know me the most. That's not gonna be you and I this week. But also, he says, something really powerful. He says that the Son of Man is gonna have to be killed. The Son of Man is gonna have to die. Something I think about often, especially this time of year, as we approach Easter, and maybe it's something that you've thought about too, is why, is the, why was the cross necessary? I think that's a question that we have to examine, especially as we approach Easter. Why was the cross necessary? Like, why did Jesus... Why did he have to die? Why couldn't there be another plan? Why couldn't it have been done the best way? Like, God, is this really the best idea that you had, that, you, that Jesus had to die? It's important this week, above all weeks, that we wrestle with this question, because hear me, no matter where you find yourself on your journey with Jesus, you can never underemphasize or undervalue the significance of the cross. You can never underemphasize or undervalue the significance of the cross. This whole week is leading up to good news. But before there is good news, there is bad news. Jesus died on a cross. He suffered. Why? Why did Jesus have to die? What is the whole point of the cross? When well, order to answer that, we have to examine our theology. We have to unpack our theology. On a day like today, when we are focusing on the road ahead, on a day like today where the corporate church all over the world is gathering to proclaim who Jesus is and we are preparing for where we are going with Easter, on a day like today, above all days, we have to know what we believe and why we believe it. Right living comes from right believing. So what was the point of the cross? Well, let's unpack our theology for a moment. The Bible says this. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So another way to phrase that is the compensation that I owe for sinning is death. Now, is that referring to just a, a physical death? No, it's, it's not just a physical death. It's referring to a spiritual death as well. The Bible says that the, ways, the wages of sin is death. So I want you to follow the train of thought here. If, if I believe that there is a God, if you and I believe that there is a God, then strictly by definition, you and I are acknowledging the existence of something that is greater than ourselves. If we believe there is a God, then strictly by definition, you and I are acknowledging the existence of something greater than ourselves. In other words, we are acknowledging the existence of something that is set apart from you and I. The biblical word for that is holy. So God, by definition, is holy. He is set apart from you and I, and if that is true, if God is set apart from you and me, then I will not, cannot, and do not measure up to his holiness. By definition, I cannot. 
So because I do not measure up to his holiness, I miss the mark of his holiness. I want you to get the picture. If God's holiness was a target, I would not be able to hit the target because I missed the mark. The biblical word for that is sin. So because I sin, or rather because I am a sinner, I am set apart from God, or rather God is set apart from me and I miss the mark of his holiness. So what's the reality? The reality attached to that outcome is unless something closes the gap between me and God, I will be separated from God after my physical death. The wages of sin is death. So after I physically die, there will be a spiritual separation for all of eternity between God and I. So something has to close the gap between God and I. That's where we get the biblical word of atonement. If nothing atones for my sins, meaning nothing bridges the gap or is offered up between me and God, I will be separated from God. That is the bad news. So something has to close the gap. In other words, there is a debt to be paid. So something or someone has to cover the bill for that debt. The bad news that you and I, that all of humanity really has to face, and the question that we have to wonder is, does everything end with death? Is everything over at death? Well, if left to our own minds, if left to our own logic, if left to our finite thinking, then we cannot definitively conclude, hear me on this, we cannot definitively conclude that there is anything that happens after death. We can only hope that there is something after death. And many worldviews do, but you cannot know for certain. So that is where we find ourselves in terms of our, our theology. The bad news is that there is a separation between us and God. We cannot know for certain. So death, it cripples us. Death, it scares us. Death seems like the end. So what was the point of the cross? The Son of Man had to go to the cross. Jesus had to suffer and he had to die in order to prove a point. What was the point? That it doesn't end in bad news, but that there is good news coming because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. The point, the point that he had to prove is that death is not final. The point that he had to prove is that it doesn't end with death. The point that he had to prove is that you don't have to pay for your sins. I will pay for your sins. The Bible says that Jesus is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. What that means is that he is God, that he is holy. And because Jesus is holy, he is already set apart from you and I. And although he is set apart and he lived a sinless life, he still subjected himself to death so that he can switch places with you and I, so that he can cover the bill for you and I. So you and I no longer have to have some hope that's not anchored to anything, but can have a hope that serves as the anchor to our soul, and we can definitively know what happens. The Son of Man, the Son of Man had to die, had to go to the cross to prove a point that death is not final, and hear me, the resurrection is evidence of that truth. That's what we're marching towards. That's what Easter is all about. The resurrection is proof that death is not final. The resurrection is proof that there is bad news now, yes, but good news is on the way. So Jesus, the Son of Man, said, I have to, I have to suffer in Luke 9. He's trying to paint a picture, guys. He's trying to give us some insight. This is what's gonna happen for me. The Son of Man, the road ahead for Jesus was suffering. What did that mean for you and I? It means that the road ahead for humanity is salvation. Write that down. The road ahead for Jesus was suffering, but what did that mean for you and me? It meant that the road ahead for humanity is salvation. Because of Jesus' decision to embark on the journey towards the cross, we are able to embark on the journey of saving our souls. Did you hear that? Because Jesus decided to embark on the journey towards the cross on that Palm Sunday, we are able to embark on the journey of saving our souls. So how do you get on the road to salvation? Well, Jesus says it there in Luke 9. Luke 9, 23 through 24. This is the same foundational text that we read. Remember, he's giving insight. What the road ahead is, guys. The road ahead for me is suffering. The road ahead for you is salvation. How do we do that, Jesus? Luke 9, 23 through 24. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, 
but whoever loses their life for me will save it. Jesus is saying that the road ahead for humanity is salvation through what? Through surrender. Unpack what his verse says. He says, deny yourself. Acknowledge that I am God. Acknowledge that there is a gap between you and I. Acknowledge that there is a separation, that you do not come first, that I come first. He's saying, first do that, deny yourself. And then he's saying, take up your cross. That means sacrifice for me the same way that I am sacrificing for you. The Bible says that the Son of Man, that Jesus, he did not come to be served, but rather to serve. We have to take on that same posture. If we are to give our lives to Jesus, we serve Jesus, we put him in his proper place of being first in our lives. Jesus is first and I am second. That's what it means for me to pick up my cross. I am willing to sacrifice all of who I am in order to follow Jesus on the road of being a Christian. I pick up my cross. So Jesus is saying the road of salvation, you have to deny yourself, acknowledge that I am God, acknowledge that there's a gap between you and I, and then deny your, uh, pick up your cross, and then what, follow me. He's saying, allow me to be the leader in your life. Allow me to be number one in your life. How does he start that text? If you wanna be my disciple, he says. What does that mean? He's saying if you wanna discipline your life, discipline your life around me. Discipline your life around the way. Because if you, If you lose your life, you'll gain your life. But if you try to gain the whole world, you might get it, but it's gonna be temporary satisfaction, temporary gratitude, and you'll be giving up an eternal promise, which is salvation with Jesus. So he's saying the road road to salvation, deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me, lose your earthly life. The The road ahead for humanity is salvation through surrender, and I love the picture of Palm Sunday. I love the picture of Palm Sunday because I think Jesus gives us perfect imagery of this principle. He is the Son of God. He is God. He is standing on the Mount of Olives looking at the literal road ahead of him. He knows what's going to happen. He knows what he's going to have to endure, yet he does it anyway. Why? Out of submission to the Father, number one. He submits to the Father, but also there's a detail that we can't overlook. There's a detail that's really important. As he embarks on the road, he does so on what? on a donkey. I told you the donkey's gonna come back. The donkey's important. He does so on a donkey. Not on a white horse, not in some fancy caravan, not on a chariot, on a freaking donkey. A lowly, unassuming, humble animal. If that isn't a picture, I don't know what is. That's him saying that the way to glory is through submission. The way to exaltation is through humility. He does so on a donkey. Those who humble themselves will be exalted, but those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Jesus is giving giving us a picture on this Palm Sunday. You, you You gotta check that. Jesus is on the road towards the greatest event in human history, the event that changed the course of history. He's on that road, and on that road he decides, I'm gonna go in on this donkey. I'm gonna do it to fulfill the prophecy, but I'm also gonna paint a picture that it's through humility. It's through surrender that I receive salvation. It's backwards, it's upside down, it's inside out, it's a contradiction, it's a contrast, but that's the way that the kingdom of God works. That's the way that God's economy works. What does he say? That the first will be last, and the last will be first. To live is Christ and to die is gain. He says if you you wanna receive, you gotta give. If you wanna lead, you gotta follow. If you wanna gain your life, you gotta lose your life. It's backwards, but that's the road to salvation. So Jesus, in Luke 9, he's trying to paint this picture. He's trying to tell people that there's a road ahead, and now they're at Palm Sunday, and they're on that road, and he's saying the road ahead for me is suffering. The road ahead for you is salvation. The road ahead for you is salvation. Do we see that today? The road ahead is salvation. On this Palm Sunday, we, we have to recognize that. And if you're in this room today, and you have not, you're hearing me talk and you have not given your life to Jesus yet. At the end of service, we're gonna create that moment for you. And we're all gonna be here, we're gonna, we're gonna be filled with anticipation because if you're in this room and you feel the presence of God, you feel a whisper in your ear, you feel a tug on your heart, that's not because I'm preaching good. That's because God's word is alive and active. That's because where two or more are gathered, Jesus is there. That's because there is a God who is not mad at you, but madly in love with you. 
and wants relationship with you. So if that's you, in a moment, at the end of service, we're gonna create that opportunity for you to give your life to Jesus. And we're gonna stay in service and we're gonna celebrate you because it's the best decision that you're ever gonna make. But for a moment, before we get there and as we come to a close, I wanna speak to the person that is in this room that is the follower of Jesus, that has raised their hand and said, yes, I will put you first. Yes, you are the Lord of my life. I wanna speak to that person just for a few more moments. Because if we have joined Jesus on the road to salvation, then we have another road ahead of us this week. Let's go back to Luke 9, our foundational text. Before Jesus paints a picture of what's ahead, he poses a question to the disciples. Luke 9, 18 through 20, it says, once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, who do the crowds say that I am? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and still others that one of the prophets, one of the men from long ago has come back to life. But what about you, he says? Who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, God's Messiah. You are the anointed one. You're the chosen one. You're the savior. Jesus asked, who do the crowd say that I am? And they replied with what? With names of men. Moses, the prophets of old, Elijah. I want you to see the parallel here to Palm Sunday because on Palm Sunday, we just read it in Matthew's account, Jesus was entering into Jerusalem and yeah, the streets were stirred, the city was stirred, palm branches proclaiming victory, waving in the air, taking off their cloaks, laying down a path, praising, singing scripture, but yet, when they asked, who is this? What was the response? In Matthew, it says that the crowds responded with, this is Jesus, the prophet, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. You see, on both accounts, on both accounts, the crowd didn't see him for who he truly was. On both accounts. Does that make the crowd bad? No, it just makes them blind. It doesn't make them bad. You know people in your life that don't know who Jesus is and they've got a different picture of Jesus than you, it doesn't make them bad. It just makes them blind. You too were once blind and then your eyes were open. So Jesus, yeah, come on, we can give God praise. It doesn't make them bad, it just makes them blind. And I need you to notice in the scripture, Jesus, he didn't correct the response of the crowd. He didn't say, no, no <laughs> that's not who I am. He didn't correct it. Instead, what did he do? He posed another question. But what about you? Who do you say that I am? I want you to write this down because this entire week, as we lead up towards Easter, this is what I want you to reflect on. Jesus isn't interested in who the crowds say he is. He's interested in who you say that he is. Who do you say that Jesus is? Who do you say that Jesus is? You gotta ask yourself that question over and over again this week. You gotta answer that question and you gotta remind yourself. Remind yourself of the truth. Remind yourself of who he is. Remind yourself of what he's done. Renew in yourself the joy of your salvation. Easter is approaching. On this Palm Sunday, we're joining together not to proclaim a prophet, but rather to bow to a king. And if Jesus is king, if he is Lord, and if that is who we declare him to be, then you and I, we have a road ahead of us this week. We've got an assignment this week. Come on, I'm talking to the Christian in the room, the believer in the room. We've got an assignment. Easter is coming. Easter is upon us. In Luke 9, Jesus is saying that the road ahead for me is suffering, which means for humanity, the road ahead is salvation. So what does that mean right now, 2024, 2,000 years later? It means that the road ahead for us is to share our story. You share your story. Easter is approaching. What did we just review? That there is a separation between me and God. There's this chasm between me and God, this divide that exists between me and God. And I needed something to atone for that. I needed something to build a bridge and Jesus inserted himself and built the bridge. So there was bad news, but he inserted himself and gave me good news. His resurrection is proof, is evidence 
that the story isn't over. It's proof, it's evidence that there is good news on the horizon. That is why you and I should be obsessed with Easter. That is why you and I should be charged up about Easter. That's why you and I should think that Easter is one of the most important days, if not the most important day on our calendar. Aside from the, the outfits, and aside from the family photos and the eggs, which you should do all of that, I'm gonna do it too, I'm gonna flaunt my family, it's gonna be awesome. But aside from all of that, we have to recognize that the crux of Christianity hinges on that one event, the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus either did or did not resurrect from the grave. And if he didn't, then the whole gamut of what you and I are a part of doesn't hold any weight. It is no different from any other worldview. It is no different from any other self-fulfilling prophecy. It is no different from any other ideology. But come on, somebody. If he did get up out of that grave, if he did resurrect, if he did stand in the gap for you and I, then we are talking about the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Word made flesh, the Emmanuel, the God with us. If he did, is decision time for the crowd. It's decision time for the crowd. It is harvest season for the crowd. You and I, we understand who Jesus is. So we tell our story. We tell our story so that we can open blind eyes. Easter is the greatest party that the church gets to throw. The road ahead is for us to share our story. We herald the good news. We stand on the mountaintop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Salvation has hit your home. It is knocking at your door. Come and see. Come taste that the Lord is good. Come recognize that there is a God who wants relationship with you, who wants to restore his original intention, his original design. He wants to bring you back into the fold. He wants to bring you back into the garden. You recognize that already. So this week, we share our story. We share it. Let this week be the greatest week of evangelism the church has ever seen. Let this be the week that we live up to the call. We bring those that are far from God, close to God. The crowd in Luke 9, the crowd on Palm Sunday, the crowd today, they think that Jesus is a man, a good teacher. He's a good word. He's a hack to life. He's ethical, he's moral, he's moral, he's an example. All of those things are true, but guys, he is he's so much more than that. He is not just a good word, he is the word. He's the word made flesh. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word made his dwelling amongst us. That's who Jesus is. He is not just a hack to life. He is the resurrection and the life. I am the way, I am the truth. I am the life. Who do you say that Jesus is? That's what he's concerned with today. That's what he's concerned with this week because he wants you to tell your story. He wants you to proclaim the good news. He wants you to be an ambassador on his behalf. He wants you to be a mouthpiece on his behalf. We invite, we bring people to church. People will come if they hear your story. They need to know who he is to you and what he's done for you because listen, they can argue your theology but they can't argue your experience. A man with an argument is at the mercy of a man with an experience. I know who he is for me, and I know who he is for you. We were blind, but now we see. We were lost, but now we're found. We were empty, but now we're filled up. We were dead, but now we are alive. On this Palm Sunday, the road ahead for Jesus was suffering. The road ahead for humanity is salvation. And the road ahead for us is to share our story. Today, we remember the road that Jesus embarked on 2,000 years ago, and we recognize and we declare that today, we get to join him on that road, and we get to bring others along on the journey, amen? amen. Come on, do you believe that? Put your hands together. Hey, this is Rich and Don Sheree Wilkerson, and we want to say thank you so much for watching and engaging with today's content. Maybe today you want to make the decision to follow Jesus. Why don't you pray this prayer with me? Dear Jesus, today I choose 
to entrust my life to you. Forgive me of my sins. Make me a new creation. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're celebrating with you the decision that you've made, and we want to walk this journey out alongside you. Yeah, and if you just prayed that prayer, why don't you go ahead and follow the prompts that are on the screen right now. We're so glad that you took some time to watch today's message. Do us a favor. If it encouraged you, if it impacted you, go ahead and share this. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the Voo Church YouTube channel so you can continue to get more content like this. We love you guys, and we're declaring the best is yet to come. come.